Our guests today on uh, Much Music, we have uh, Donnie and Ian from the Ben Run Ring from Scotland. Welcome, guys. Hi, nice to see you. Nice oh, to yeah, see you. Good to be here. Did you enjoy your show last night at uh, the Metropolis in Montreal? Yeah, it was good. Really was good. It good. Great night. Good atmosphere. Yes. Yeah. Good crowd. You, you guys are so big in Europe right now. I mean, you're so huge, you're like in, in Scotland and all, all tour Europe. Uh, I was reading in the paper that Van Morrison opened up for you in Scotland. <laughs> kind of hard to believe for us, you know? Who said that you did that? <laughs> is it true? Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. It was just in the paper. You played before us, is what you're saying. Oh, I mean, it depends okay. on what, you, what kind of interpretation you want. We played a festival together. Oh, okay. And we, 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 we headlined the festival, mm -hmm. you know, but that was it. Okay. We See, don't think about things that way, you know? No, 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 I know. It wasn't yeah. exactly the support band, but... But no, well, we're just using it as an example sure. to, to demonstrate how uh, successful the band is uh, in Scotland and in Europe. So how does it feel to come to uh, America, to come to Canada and play smaller venues with a smaller crowd? Well, this is, about, this is the third time I think we've been across to Canada. I think yeah. 87 was the first time, across two years ago. And uh, it's great to come across and play to new audiences. And it, by playing in the smaller places, you realize, you know, there's still a lot of hard work to be done. And there's a new a new country to, to, to work on. And, uh, it, it keeps you fresh and, and it gives you a, a, an objective to, to work towards because it's easy to take everything for granted when you know you've got success in one area and you know it'd be wrong to think that that's a kind of blanket thing so it's good to you know focus your attention on somewhere new. This is like a humility test or something no. like that. <laughs> no, we've had all these in the past. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't need that we've been anymore. Through the humility <laughs> test. Uh, oh. No, like Ian says, it's, it, you know, when you're working with music, the, the most exciting thing about it is being able to share it with other people. Yeah. And we started off in our own territory and own own uh, area at home, and it's grown through Europe. And obviously, there's a very, mm. a very strong link between ourselves and Scotland. And, and Canada in particular. There's a lot of uh, Scottish. There's people in here from mm. Glasgow. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, somebody. Yeah. It's a very exciting place you've gone to. We don't have anything <laughs> like this in Scotland. But the first time in 87, I think we were here for a week and it was about four days before I met a Canadian. Everyone was from Glasgow or Kilmarnock or something like that. So. But then, then the, the contagion is starting to spread here very fast too in Canada. Like yeah. uh, you're, very, you're doing really, really well here now too. And uh, with this new album too called Amazing Things. This, well, your latest album, it's like 93 now? Yeah, it's about so. uh, just over a year, yeah. 18 months. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have another album coming out very shortly in November, okay. which is a live album. Okay. Recorded in Europe and in Scotland, some of the live, big live shows. Done. So hopefully that will be released to you as well. Yes, mm -hmm. that's going to be great. Yeah. Um, um, you, on this album, I noticed that you sing in Gaelic and in English as well. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you translate also mm -hmm. for <laughs> like somebody like me who doesn't speak Gaelic, yeah. the, the lyrics. Is it important for you to, to keep speaking Gaelic? Is it something that you learn, like, I'm going to sound in, ignorant maybe, but is it something that you learned when you were, were growing up? Is it like a, a language that you spoke at home or is it a... A yeah. language that you learned. There, are, there cool. are three of the band members who, who did uh, grow up with Gaelic languages as, as the home language, if you like. You know, but very early, you know, up until preschool age, you know, once, once school age came, then it was English language that dominated. But uh, it, it, it's only important to the point that it's a natural thing to do. You know, if you, if you, if you are a native French speaker, then you can you perform music in French language. Yeah. And in English, if you're bilingual, and it's the same with us. We don't like to make a big deal of that, as and, uh, quite often people try and, and sort of create that as being the focal, to what, the focal point of what we do. But it's really the, it's, it's the strength of the musical tradition, as much as the language tradition, that, that we hope comes through in what we do. There's two brothers in the band, Calvin and Rory McDonald, you see, and Dave. Um, that's their first language, so it's yeah. as natural to them yeah. to, to speak Gaelic and think in Gaelic and write songs in Gaelic as it would be in English. So. I mean, if it's part of you, then, you know, then there's no reason to not write songs in Gaelic, so... What are your musical roots? Well, they're so diverse. I mean, there's six, six people in the band that were also completely different, but um, what we actually collectively uh, draw upon in our, in our musical experiences and influences is the chemistry that becomes known mm -hmm. as run which is quite an unusual thing in life when you get six people who actually do gel musically together. And I think it's something to, t to really sort of cherish and take advantage of. And uh, the, 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 you could speak to the guitar player who's got a lot of um, Scottish dance influence, as well as blues and rock, and myself it would be uh, pipe band music and rock, but all from different ideas. And Peter, the keyboard player, is probably much from the, 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 the harder edge of music. He came up through the punk era. Oh, yeah. And, uh, 
He was the only, he was the only guy playing wal waltz music. Waltz music, music. Waltz <laughs> punk music, actually. So, <laughs> so uh, between the six of us, it's a very kind of, um, it's not a clash of ideas or, or backgrounds, but it's certainly a strange mixture. It's an interesting mix. What mm. do you listen to these days, like now in the 90s? Do listen you... to everything, really, that's, you know, that's worth listening to. You know, you're always looking for things that people are doing, and, and there's always something interesting happening. You know, so I try and listen to as much as possible. Do you so. find that uh, you're being influenced by, by new bands or by new movements that are happening, like... Uh, or like something more, in, more influenced than others, yeah. honestly, say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think even if you don't like a particular style of music, that you can still be influenced by an element of it. You know, it doesn't. It, it, you don't have to naturally like it or it be your taste. But if you go along and see live music, for example, there's something that people do in the live situation that you know you'll find they do differently from the way you might have done it, and it makes you think about how you're doing things yourself. So, you know, all these things are important. That's true. Yeah. Tell me about your videos. How do you like uh, making videos? We hate that, making you videos. You hate it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it varies, you know? It's like some bands can like it, like to get involved. It's like a mini film, and, mm. but some bands just... Oh, I mean, some despise. people, they, they say it's a necessary evil. We believe <laughs> it's a completely unnecessary evil. It's, uh, it's it complete. I mean, there are, very, there are people who work very creatively in, in video, and, and I suppose that the fact of the matter is we probably haven't been in their company yet. No. You so know, you don't really get involved in uh, Well, we, I mean, storyboarding, you do to a certain extent, yeah. but mm -hmm. very often these things, you know, the, the process of working, it, it never turns out exactly as how you might think it would. I mean, our own videos, the, the stuff we did ourselves, which we had a, we actually had two videos which were, were top of the, the, the video charts in the UK, the, both the, mm -hmm. the music video charts and the, the normal retail video. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was something that we all jointly uh, worked on and edited and, you know, selected. And that was good fun. That was an interesting thing to do. But that was all mostly live concert footage and documentary stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's quite difficult when you have a song, you know, taking an idea. You find that it doesn't represent the... But sometimes it's difficult, you know, because people have visual ideas about songs. You know, when they're left with a blank screen, they have their own visual ideas. And sometimes, sometimes if you supplant that with another idea, it can, it can detract, you know, or it can take away that, that yeah. capacity mm. for people to do that. That's what you, is that what your general um, um, opinion about videos in general? I mean, if you see Peter Gabriel, you know, uh, fantastic experience looking at Peter Gabriel video, you know. If you've got yeah. unlimited funds to spend on videos, you can do whatever you want, you know. But, I mean, most plans are in a situation where you've got a very um, sensible or limited budget. So there's only so much you can yeah, you, you can do with that. So your idea on paper might be absolutely brilliant, but when it gets done to, to film, it's absolute crap, you know. So it's a fine balance between the two. So. You have to be really creative when you have a little bit of money. Well, that's, that's <laughs> a special thing. So, I mean, uh, it's not it's not always correct to say that a little money always means that the products aren't good, you know. Because, like you say, it can make you very creative. Yeah. By just by circumstances. But not often. Not often, yeah. Well, well we, we have, have not in our experience. I like this video that, that we're going to play wonderful. It's right. a wonderful uh, video and a wonderful song. And uh, you, you guys are going to be at the Massey Hall tonight in Toronto. It's a great room, too. That's right. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a good, uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be a, 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 it's a good venue. You love it. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you very much for uh, thank dropping you very much. by. Thank okay. Thanks a lot. And, nice to meet you. Uh, have a good tour okay. and come back more often. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we love you here. Okay. <laughs>